Today we've had a magnitude 3.2 earthquake near Seattle, and it did rattle Mount Rainier volcano. We've had quake swarms these past few days at Mount St. Helens volcano, as well as Mount Hood volcano. Now, from what we see, there's been about 53 people reported feeling this earthquake in Skokomish, Washington, just southwest of Seattle. But we have to look at what's going on there as far as the vibrations, frequencies, and also the future eruptions predicted for Mount Rainier and Mount Hood by USGS. This is the USGS map. It shows us the threat category designated by color. And as you can see, the west coast, just under Vancouver, you have those red triangles. Well, those are the Cascade volcanoes. Most of them, as you can see, are very high threat categories. As you go towards uh, the south, you have moderate to very low. For example, high threat is, of course, Yellowstone, and green is the Idaho and uh, yellow, uh, moderate yellow uh, Utah volcanoes. But we have the most of the Cascade volcanoes, you can see, are very high threat. That includes Mount Rainier, Mount Hood, Mount Andes, Mount St. Helens. Let's see what's happening there. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Here we are at the very high threat volcanoes of the Cascades and let's go to our Sizewell Berkeley. This is the quake I'm talking about, the 3.2, but you see that we've had Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, and Mount Hood, a tremendous amount of, they're small, but still, they're volcanic earthquakes, as you can see, okay? And Mount Rainier, as you can see, but we're going to look at uh, some of these as well. Now, what about the frequency? This is it, and let's go to our frequency and the shake contours as you can see they're piling up and where are they the aerial okay here we are seattle is right here as you can see seattle must have been shaken they probably felt it in uh, victoria british columbia as well and you, you can very clearly see mount rainier mount st helens mount hood right here Okay, that must have been shaken. If you extend the frequency uh, vibration, you can see that these have been taken in as well. Now, let's go to our future eruptions of Mount Rainier, according to USGS. When Mount Rainier erupts again, volcanic activity may affect people living in the surrounding areas, those visiting the park, and uh, potentially those flying overhead. It will impact a scenic natural resource that provides, of course, recreation and all this, even with drinking water and power generation. An eruption is likely to be preceded by days to months or more of small earthquakes centered beneath the volcano and by subtle deformation of the volcano and increase in volcanic gases and emissions. Detection of these natural processes can allow communities to go to heightened levels of alert and take basic precautions against hazards, as of course they did with Mount St. Helens. The new eruption of Mount Rainier will most likely start with steam and ash explosions at the summit and progress to the effusion of small lava flow or the disintegration of steeply sloping lava flows as avalanches of hot rock and gas called pyroclastic flows. Now, either type of eruption will probably create lahars which can reach heavily populated areas. Weak hydrothermally altered rocks remain at high elevation on the rock in the volcano's west flank, and some of this material could be dislodged by earthquakes during an eruptive period. We cannot rule out the possibility that altered material could collapse due to its own weakness. Now, 
Uh, we're not going to go into the, the eruption history and everything else, but uh, you can, I'll leave a link below, if, of course, and you can see it for yourself. Let's go now to uh, Mount Hood. Again, um, let's go to this. Okay, I forgot to show you this map. Okay, this is Mount St. Helens. And uh, let's pull out, you can see, where are we? Mount Hood is a little bit lower down. Okay, let's go. We can see it if it's, if it's uh, from the snow cover top. Okay, around here, around here. Mount Rainier. And um, you can see all these cascade volcanoes, as we know, are a uh, very high threat. Okay, and this one here as well. Okay, Mount Adams. Okay, so all these are the high threat volcanoes where we've had our um, uh, quake swarms lately these past few days. It only shows the past week, so you can understand this has been going on for months. Okay, let's go to the eruption history of Mount Hood in Oregon. Um, they, it's been active for the last half a million years, and um, it has produced ancestral hood-like volcanoes for the past one and a half million years. Much of this is formed of lava flows, but eruptive activity during the past 30,000 years has been dominated by growth and collapse of near-summit lava domes and broad fans of pyroclastic flows deposits. The last two periods of eruptive activity occurred about one and a half thousand years ago, about 500 AD, and in the, la in the late 18th century, in addition to Mount Hood, other volcanoes scattered throughout the nearby area as we said before, Mount Adams, Mount Rainier, Mount uh, St. Helens. Each of these regional volcanoes was active for the relatively short period of time. The youngest such volcano is the seven kilometer long Parkdale lava flow, whose vent lies about 12 kilometers north northeast of the summit of Mount Hood. Um, about 130,000 years ago, the pinnacle of Hood's north flank um, formed. Uh, roughly 100,000 years ago, a large debris avalanche removed the summit and north flank of Mount Hood. You can see the lava flows here. Look at this, about 350,000 years ago. And this is the edifice rebuilding, 15 to 30,000 years ago. Okay, multiple episodes of lava dome growth, pyroclastic flows, lava flows, lahars, tephra, 8,000 years ago. Debris avalanche from upper south flank, 4,000 years ago, even 200 years ago, lava dome at Crater Rock, pyroclastic flows, lahars in south and west valleys, and the mid-1800s, small steam and ash explosions. Okay, yeah, in the mid-1800s. And here we are, what they look like, sequence of two gray pyroclastic flow deposits and yellowish lahar deposits. In the middle. This thing here, 1781, old maid eruptive period. Okay, dormant, it was followed by a dormant period of more than a thousand years. The youngest major eruption of Mount Hood, pyroclastic flows and lahars generated by repeated collapse of lava. And the mid 19th century, Early settlers reported eruptive activity in 1859 and 1865. Witnesses referred to fire, smoke, flying rocks, and voluminous steaming, which may describe modest explosive eruptions from the cooling conduit and dome, the crater rock, that was active decades earlier during the old May eruptive period. No deposits have been found that can be tied unequivocally to either of these 19th century events. So as we can see, this is what uh, it's in the area, and here they are. If you extend the shake contours, all these up here must have been shaken. Okay, I don't know about Mount Hood, but uh, Mount Adams, Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, definitely. So all of you there, please be, be very careful. I'm sure everybody in Seattle must have felt this. If you have or have not, and you live in the area, please let us know. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.